Hey guys, it's Jan here. Ryan Reynolds has said that his Deadpool movie has more Easter eggs than the Easter Bunny. So I've put together every Easter egg and reference I could find in this video. I'm sure you'll have spotted other cool ones too, so do share those in the comments below. And just before I kick off, I've got an awesome giveaway. So if you'd like a chance to win some cool Deadpool merch, make sure you subscribe and comment about your favorite Easter egg on this video. For more details and ways to enter the comp, check out the Gleam link in the video description below. Now, a quick reminder, there will be spoilers ahead, so if you're not ready for that, check out my non-spoiler review of the movie here. First up, the opening credits are littered with some great meta movie jokes, such as starring God's Perfect Idiot, a British villain, the hot chick, a CGI character, a gratuitous cameo, and many more. And floating among the credits is a coffee cup labelled Rob L, in honour of Deadpool comic book co-creator Rob Liefeld. There's also a nod to Ryan Reynolds' turn as Hal Jordan in the 2011 film Green Lantern, with a Green Lantern trading card popping out of a wallet. And a copy of People magazine floats by with Ryan Reynolds on the cover as the 2010 Sexiest Man of the Year, and later in the movie Deadpool stuffs a sack of Hugh Jackman 2008 Sexiest Man of the Year magazines into his gun bag. And as you'd expect, there's a ton of comic book references in the movie too. The humorous scene with pizza delivery guy Jeremy and apartment owner Mr. Merchant is a plot that closely resembles a storyline from the comics, where Deadpool was contracted to kill a pizza delivery guy who'd spread a nasty rumour about a girl in high school. In the comics, the pizza guy is called Gavin, whereas in the movie, Gavin is actually the first name of the guy who owns the apartment. Given this sequence involves two guys, a pizza and later a girl, it's also a nod to Ryan Reynolds' breakout role as Michael Berg Bergen in the TV comedy series Two Guys, A Girl and a Pizza Place. And Deadpool's line, what situation isn't improved by pizza? Is a another nod to the situation comedy or sitcom that Reynolds made his name in. And did you notice that the pizza box is from Feige's Pizzeria, which is a nice allusion to former X-Men producer and current Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige. Later, when Wade meets the girl the pizza guy was stalking, he says he should have brought his rollerblades, which is a callback to the comics where Deadpool goes rollerblading. Wade's mercenary bar hangout is called Sister Margaret's School for Wayward Children, which is the same as Deadpool's mercenary hangout in the comics, which is also known as the Hell House. Rob Liefeld, Deadpool's co-creator, has a small cameo as one of the patrons at Weasel's Bar. And when Wade walks into the bar for the first time, you can hear the words Fuck Liefeld, which is likely an allusion to his controversial status with some comic book fans. By the way, Deadpool's costume has the trademark Liefeld pouches. And Booth, one of the mercenaries at the bar, could be a nod to Assassin 8, aka Andre Booth, the cyborg killer from the comics. And the character of Buck feels like it's based on the character Steel Fitzpatrick, aka CF, who was also a portly mercenary and friend of Deadpool's at the Hell House. In the movie, Wade Wilson chooses the name Deadpool from the betting pool that Weasel runs on which mercenary will die next, a parallel to the comic book origin story where Wade chooses his name from a betting pool on which inmate would die next at the Weapon X government experimentation facility. One of the other superhero names suggested by Weasel is Scare Devil, a jive at Daredevil who Deadpool has teamed up with in the comics. And the action scene where Deadpool is fighting goons in a corridor is reminiscent of a similar scene in Marvel's Daredevil on Netflix, which it's itself was a nod to a fight scene in the movie Old Boy. And by the way, Philip Silvera was the stunt coordinator for both Deadpool and Netflix's Daredevil. Wade also joked he should be Captain Deadpool, which is both a nod to Ryan Reynolds' role as Captain Excellent in the movie Paper Man, and probably also a crack at Captain America. There's also a bit of a parody of Captain America's shield when Deadpool throws a car wheel rim at Ajax when they're on the highway. Talking about names, Deadpool jokes that Ajax's name sounds surprisingly made up, and that he probably took it from a dish soap. He also wonders what Ajax's real name might be and offers Bruce and Scott as possibilities, which could be nods to the Hulk's name Bruce Banner and Cyclops' name Scott Summers or Ant-Man's name Scott Lang. Ajax's obsession with not using his real name Francis is taken from the Deadpool and Death 1998 annual in which Deadpool discovers that Ajax hates being called by his real name. And in a post-breaking bad world, Ajax's often repeated line, what's my name, also has a ring of Walter White's words, say my name about it. The name tag that Wade steals from Ajax has a surname Freeman on it, which is likely a nod to Marvel comic book inker Jeremy Freeman, who inked an issue of Cable and Deadpool where Ajax returns from the dead on Wade's TV screen. Oh, and by the way, in the comics, as in the film, Ajax explains how his nerve endings have been scorched so he no longer feels pain. 
And because Fox have the movie rights to Marvel's mutant superheroes X-Men, and Marvel can't use the word mutant in their movies, Ajax's description of his henchwoman Angel Dust as inhumanly strong feels like a cheeky nod to Marvel's Inhumans, who are part of the MCU in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and their own upcoming movie. When Wade gets a Voltron Defender of the Universe ring with his arcade tickets, it's an easter egg to the time in the comics when Deadpool converted himself into Voltron, combining his supporting brute force characters into one super robot. And there's another nod to this at the end of the movie when Deadpool says to Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead, for a minute there it felt like we were three mini lion robots coming together to form one super robot. The movie also has some nice hints to Vanessa's copycat alter ego in the comics. For example, the white streaks in her dark hair hint at copycat's white hair. And because copycat has blue skin in the comics, we sometimes see Vanessa with blue objects, such as her blue bedsheets and her transparent umbrella, which has a blue rim and a blue handle. When Vanessa says to Wade, red's your colour, it brings out the bloodshot in your eyes. It's a nod to copycat's sometimes red eyes in the comics. There's a funny Star Wars joke between Wade and Vanessa when she tells him to ride a bitch's back like Yoda does Luke's, and note she's referencing The Empire Strikes Back, not the first Star Wars movie. And when Wade replies to her, it's like I made you in a computer, it's a cool easter egg to X-Men 2 when Mystique is searching through Stryker's computer and Copycat's name appears. And in the trailer, Vanessa's line, I've played a lot of roles in my life, damsel in distress ain't one of them, is a reference to both her shape-shifting powers as Copycat in the comics, and also to Morena Baccarin's multiple TV and film roles such as Gotham, Firefly, Serenity V, and many more. And at the strip club where Vanessa works, Stan Lee cameos as an MC, introducing the strippers on stage with the line, give it up for chastity. And we also hear Lee's voice in the background at the club saying, you can't buy love, but you can rent it for three minutes. When Wade finds out about his cancer at the oncologist, there's a nod to Deadpool's hatred of clowns in the comics, when he quips to the doctor, you're clowning, not clowning, I sense clowns. The B. Arthur t-shirt that Wade wears at numerous points in the film is a callback to the comics, where Deadpool is a fan of Golden Girls actress B. Arthur, calling her the sexiest woman alive. Back at Weasel's Bar, Wade's joke that the recruiter's proposal sounds like a dodgy infomercial is a callback to the comics where Deadpool mocks supervillain Taskmaster. Oh, and when he calls the recruiter Agent Smith, it's a nice nod to the Matrix antagonist of the same name. And when Wade tells the recruiter that I tried the hero business and it left a mark, it's a dig at Ryan Reynolds' role in the critically panned Green Lantern movie. And earlier in the movie at the skateboard park, when Wade looks at his green-rimmed sunglasses in disgust and throws them away, it feels like a jab at the Green Lantern's mask. Later at Ajax's workshop, Ryan Reynolds pokes yet more fun at the Green Lantern movie with Wade's line, please don't make my suit green, or animated. Also at the workshop, we get a glimpse of the mutant Mero, who has bones which grow out of her body. When Wade's in the glass oxygen deprivation case, he steals a match from Angel Dust and lights it as a way to escape, which feels like a nod to Ryan Reynolds' movie Buried, where he's trapped in a coffin with nothing but a lighter and a cell phone to help him get out. And when Wade emerges from the rubble of the workshop, it feels reminiscent of the way that Deadpool's hand emerges from the rubble in the post-credits of X-Men Origins Wolverine. Speaking of that movie, there's a sideswipe at that version of Deadpool when in this movie the merc with a mouse says, shit's just gone sideways in the most colossal way, and the camera immediately cuts to an action figure of the Origins Wolverine Deadpool with its mouth sewn shut. And the joke continues as we hear Wade say, this is my most prized possession. But as the camera pans up, we realise he's actually talking about Wham's Make It Big album. And there's another reference later to that Deadpool when Ajax tells Wade to shut up or he'll sew his pretty mouth shut. And also when Wade is in the oxygen deprivation tank and refuses to say Ajax's name, we hear Deadpool's voiceover say, Sorry Francis, my lips are sealed. By the way, when Wade jokes that he looks like he was bitten by a radioactive Sharpe, it's an easter egg to a very similar moment in Cable and Deadpool number 2, which was published in 2004 and coincidentally seemed to predict Ryan Reynolds would play Deadpool. There's also several Spider-Man references in the film, including the line, Go get her, tiger, which Weasel says to Wade and which Deadpool also later says to Negasonic Teenage Warhead. The line's an echo of Mary Jane's words to Peter Parker, Go get him, tiger, at the end of the Spider-Man 2 movie. And when the action freezes Deadpool, mid-air, we find him in a typical upside-down Spider-Man pose. Spider-Monkey from the alternate Marvel Apes universe also gets a mention when Deadpool's fighting two female opponents. 
And in Wade's final voiceover, his mention of your friendly neighbourhood pool guy is an obvious play on Spider-Man's popular phrase, your friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man. There's also a street sign for Parker Boulevard, and a host of other street signs and nods to the comic books or the movie itself, including Fabian Road and Nicieza Street, which are named after Deadpool co-creator Fabian Nicieza. Miller Street's named for director Tim Miller or actor TJ Miller who plays Weasel, and Silver Avenue and Shaham Circle are nods to Deadpool VFX coordinators Scott Aaron Silver and Tamar Shaham. There are also loads of jokes and references to Fox's popular mutant movie franchise, X-Men, including a glimpse of the X-Jet. When Colossus says they're off to see Professor X, Deadpool asks, McAvoy or Stewart? These timelines are so confusing. Deadpool's joke about only ever seeing two X-Men at the mansion and not being able to afford more X-Men characters is a reference to this R-rated movie's tight budget compared to the budget of many PG-13 superhero movies. A negasonic teenage warhead pokes fun at the franchise with jokes about matching unitards and a house that blows up every few years. And Deadpool's tirade about the Neverland Mansion, in other words, Xavier's home for gifted youngsters, and Charles Xavier being a creepy Heaven's Gate looking mother the fucker is a nod to some of Professor X's less savoury moments in the comics, for example when he admitted he was in love with a 15 year old Jean Grey. When Colossus tells Negasonic Teenage Warhead that breakfast is the most important meal of the day and offers her a protein bar, it's a callback to a candy variant cover of Deadpool, which features a fake advertisement for a protein bar. Marvel issued the cover as a dig at their rivals DC, who'd been running half-page Twix ads in their comics. By the way, that cover also shows Deadpool and Rhino fighting, and there was a Rhino Easter egg in Weasel's bar with a Rhino head trophy on one of the walls. When comic book writer Grant Morrison created Negasonic Teenage Warhead, he named her after a song by American rock band Monster Magnet. In the movie, Deadpool thinks it's the coolest name ever, which is exactly what the screenwriters thought too, which is why they included her in their script. In the comics, Warhead is a member of the Hellfire Club and a student of telepath Emma Frost, whereas in the movie she's an X-Men trainee, who at the junkyard later in the film we see in her X-Men uniform. And let's not forget the reference Deadpool makes the X-Man Hank McCoy, when he asks Colossus to tell Beast to stop shitting on his lawn. I just mentioned the junkyard, well when Deadpool arrives there, his line, time to make the chimmy fucking changas, is a cool nod to the comics where he has a penchant for repeating the word chimichanga over and over because he likes the way it sounds. As Deadpool, Warhead and Colossus stride in to confront Ajax and his gang, we hear DMX's hip-hop track, X Gonna Give It To Ya, which is a nice nod to the Weapon X program which created Deadpool. When Deadpool removes his underwear to use as a white flag in the junkyard scene, it's a nod to a similar moment in Deadpool number 31. There's a great moment when Deadpool's fighting one of Ajax's men and suddenly they stop and the other guy is revealed as Bob, who Deadpool knows. This funny scene could be a nod to Bob, a Hydra agent who has numerous storylines with Deadpool in the comics, or given that Deadpool mentions Jacksonville and that the food Bob's wife makes is bad for the waistline, the character could be a reference to Billy Bob Riley, who grew up in Jacksonville and whose alias is Fat, spelt P-H-A-T. In fact, the character Fat actually appeared in X-Men The Last Stand. And when Ajax says to Deadpool, I hear you grow back body parts. When I'm finished, body parts are gonna have to grow back you. Well, it resembles a time in Cable and Deadpool, if looks could kill, when Deadpool regenerates after being turned into nothing but a puddle. And when Ajax sticks a knife in Deadpool's head and he starts to hear Chicago's You're the Inspiration, it's a callback to Cable and Deadpool, number 49, when Kazar sticks a knife through Deadpool's head while a tune plays in the background and the final showdown on what looks like a rusty old helicarrier, and the post-credits joke about Samuel L. Jackson showing up is a poke at Marvel's cinematic universe. Okay, let's talk about the fourth wall. In the comics, Deadpool famously breaks the fourth wall and the movie certainly doesn't disappoint. There's a moment where Colossus tells Deadpool he can hear him talking and Deadpool replies, I wasn't talking to you, I was talking to them, which is a nice callback to a similar moment in the comics between Deadpool, Benjamin Franklin and S.H.I.E.L.D. agent Emily Preston. And there are loads more examples, such as when Deadpool flicks chewing gum on the camera lens while in the taxi. Also when he talks to the audience saying, oh hello, I know right, whose balls did I have to fondle to get my own movie? Rhymes with Paul Vereen. And let me tell you, he's got a nice pair of smooth criminals down under, he adds in his best Aussie accent. Of course, there's more gentle ribbing of Hugh Jackman later when Wade reveals a Hugh Jackman face cut out and stapled to his own face to hide his scars from Vanessa. 
And there's even a fourth wall meta joke with Deadpool pointing out a fourth wall break within another fourth wall break. A nod to the time when Deadpool's explained the fourth wall to other comic characters in the comic books. Other fourth wall breaks include Deadpool saying cue the music and when he freezes the action to explain why this is a different kind of superhero movie. And there's an absolute barrage of pop culture references too. For example, Deadpool has an Adventure Time watch and a Hello Kitty duffel bag. He jokes about Honey Boo Boo reality TV star Mama June. He argues about the merits of different IKEA furniture with Blind Al, he has a Deadpool toy on the shelf in his apartment as well as a Star Wars lunchbox, and he pokes fun at Batman and Robin saying that Robin loves Batman. And speaking of Batman, when Wade wonders if his mask is muffling his voice, it's a little jab at Tom Hardy's bane in The Dark Knight Rises. When fellow bar patron Buck comments that he'd hit this in reference to Vanessa, she makes a Lord of the Rings reference when she grabs his balls and tells him to say the words, fat Gandalf. And Wade tells Vanessa to Hakuna his Tatas, making a Lion King reference to the song Hakuna Matata. Wade's promise that he'll return and boombox Curlis Whisper outside Vanessa's window is a nod to director Cameron Crowe's first movie, Say Anything, where John Cusack plays Peter Gabriel's In Your Eyes outside his ex-girlfriend's window. There's several other musical jokes in the movie too, including nods to new metal band Limp Bizkit, the rock band Spin Doctors, and of course more mentions of Wham's second album, Make It Big, which featured Curlis Whisper. And Deadpool also wears a t-shirt from the rock musical Rent. Oh, and Negasonic Teenage Warhead's shaven head leads Deadpool to tell her nothing compares to you and to call her Sinead, after Irish singer Sinead O'Connor, who had a massive hit with that song back in 1990. And he also calls Warhead Ripley from Alien 3, after Sigourney Weaver's iconic character in that movie. There's also a great joke about the Taken franchise and its star Liam Neeson's parenting skills. And there's a shout out to The Godfather when Deadpool turns up at the X Mansion and tells Colossus that I've got an offer you can't refuse. And in the montage where Deadpool's searching for Francis, the kill using a Zamboni ice resurfacer is a nod to Austin Powers. Weasel suggests that Wade should start making his own horror movies, as his face looks like the Nightmare on Elm Street character Freddy Krueger fucked a topographical map of Utah. There's also a nod to the Marvel Comics Blade franchise when Weasel tells Ajax and Angel Dust to enjoy their Blade 2 midnight screening. Which is interesting as Ryan Reynolds has said it was his role as vampire hunter Hannibal King in Blade Trinity, which brought him to the attention of a Fox executive who thought that character and Deadpool had many similarities and asked him to play the role. The reference to Danny Boyle's movie 127 Hours when Deadpool saws off his own hand was brilliant, and just before he jumps onto the garbage truck he also references author Judy Bloom's 1970 young adult novel, Are You There God? It's Me Margaret. Also when Deadpool introduces himself to taxi driver Depinder as Paul, dead, it feels like a funny twist on James Bond's classic line, Bond, James Bond. And he also tells Depinder that director Ron Howard's sci-fi movie Cocoon about a bunch of old people made young again by an alien life force is pure pornography. When Deadpool and Blind Al argue about whether looks are important or not, he asks her, what do I keep telling you, Mrs. Magoo? A nod to the nearsighted cartoon character, Mr. Magoo. And when Blind Al says that looks aren't everything, Deadpool keeps the pop culture and meta references flowing with his comments on footballer David Beckham's high-pitched voice and adds, do you think Ryan Reynolds got this far on his superior acting method? The various toy or animated unicorns and rainbow jokes that we see are a reference to the popular memes of Deadpool riding a unicorn or Pegasus. The final scene where Wade says to Colossus, I'm just a boy about to stand in front of a girl and tell her, what the fuck am I going to tell her? Is a parody of Notting Hill where Julia Roberts says to Hugh Grant, I'm also just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. There's also a whole bunch of meta moments in the movie. For example, right at the start, Deadpool picks up a haunted Segway Tours leaflet, looks at it thoughtfully and then saves it in his suit. This could be a joke about the narrative structure of the film and the way Deadpool plays around segwaying between different times and places. Throughout the movie, Deadpool pokes fun at the superhero genre in general and shows how self-aware he is. For example, he jokes about superhero landings and how bad they are for your knees. And when he thinks of the pros and cons of being a superhero, he lists lucrative film deals, both origin stories and larger ensemble team movies, as a positive. Owen at the bar, when Weasel tells Wade that the recruiter guy wants to talk to him, he adds, it may further the plot. And later when Wade comes up with his alias Deadpool, Weasel comments, that sounds like a fucking franchise. And the animated unicorn which shits money during the closing credits as the producers' names appear on the screen is a joke about them doing very well for themselves out of these superhero movies. The post credit scene where Deadpool appears in his Ferris Bueller-style dressing gown and asks, 
Why Are You Still Here? is a meta reference to the popularity of post credit scenes in comic book movies, especially Marvel movies. The look of the whole scene owes a lot to director John Hughes' film Ferris Bueller's Day Off, from the layout of the room with its two doors and the pictures on the wall to the wallpaper. And Reynolds even ends the post credits with Chicka Chicka from Yellow's song Oh Yeah, which also featured in the classic 80s comedy. Ok guys, what other easter eggs and references did you spot in Deadpool? And what was your favourite moment in the movie? I can't wait to read your comments below. And if you want to check out more of my Deadpool videos, I've got links to my playlist here, including 10 things you didn't know about Deadpool and my review of the movie. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment about your favourite easter egg on this video for a chance to win some awesome Deadpool merch. For more details and ways to enter the comp, check out the Gleam link in the video description below. Thanks for watching and see you next time, yippee guy movie lovers!